All right, full screen. Um, all right, going to attack something I haven't done before, haven't thought about it uh, from this perspective. Uh, so I want to share uh, some thoughts with you about solving x squared equals 4x from geometric, numerical, graphical, and algebraic perspectives. Center the screen a little bit. Um, and I was thinking about the geometric last night, so just going to have at it. Uh, going to have a discussion here. Uh, nothing prepared. Just going to do it on the fly. But I do believe x squared is a shape. And it could be a big shape square, a little shape square. It could be, you know, there's lots of squares here. But it's a square. And if I'm going to say something equals something, if it's a square, I think I need one on this side. I think I need to make the shape of a square. And I think 4 times x can give me one. 4 times x. Well, the only way this is a square is if x equals 4. Right. And the only way I can draw this square, the same way as that, if this is a fixed dimension, then I have a fixed dimension as well on this side. And for something to be a square, it's got to be 4 times 4. Okay. And somebody probably looked at this and said, well, what if we bring that square to this side? What if we have x squared on this side and we're subtracting 4 times x. Now, I'll make this a smaller, you know, because this is variable right now, but that's fixed. Well, the only way this is true, right, if you bring that to this side, you've got x squared minus 4x equals 0. So there's no area. Or the side dimensions have to be the same. Okay, so let's see where that's going to go. Um, if x squared has area, let's say it has area, and minus 4 times, if I need the same shape, then that has to be true. That's 16 units of area right now. But this was also a variable. So if it's not 4, then I generally have just an area statement, if this was some other side length than four, let's say it's five. Okay, well, that's not a square anymore. It's a rectangle, but it's not a square. That's not gonna work. So it has to be four, but there's one other situation that also works. There's another situation that also works, and that is, what if the areas were zero? I do have something to work with here. This is a variable. And if I make that equal to zero, I mean, they have this in common. They have this side length in common right now. So if I make this zero, it's basically eating away the area on this side, which gives me no area. And if x is zero, it eats the area up on this side. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, language matters. I don't know if, if variables can eat things. But as x tends to zero from the right, that's what I was showing. As it goes from, you know, I started at five, I go to four, I go to three, I go to two, the area disappears, and then I get equality. So there is a geometric component possible for considering that equation. Now, someone at some point figured out this was the common dimension. And x minus four, that product brings us right back to the original statement. And this is another major geometric concept. Length, width, area. And the only way I know how to get area zero for a length times a width is to make one of those dimensions, one of them equal zero. And we're back to where we started but we have at least a mechanical way to see this. And that's the algebraic solution, taking out the common factor, right? What do these have in common? Well, this is x times x, not drawn well, and this is minus four times x. So you tell me what's common. The upper dimension is common. And so we can show this calculation by 
doing the first rule of writing products, rule number one, take out what's common, x, x minus four. And then from the geometric perspective, you can maybe see why we're doing the things we're doing. Now, let's do it from a numerical perspective. X is variable. Let's just start with negative two. If I square it, I get four, negative one. One, zero, zero, one, one, two, four, three, nine, four, sixteen, and five, twenty-five. That's a numerical table with user-friendly numbers. I didn't ask you to square 2.357. Well, we'll talk about what the change from 2.357 to 2.356 or 3.58. Let's not have that discussion. Okay, let's put negative two in. Negative two times four is negative eight. I don't think those are equal. Let's put negative one in. Negative one, negative four. I don't think those are equal. Let's put zero in. Oh, I think we have a solution. Let's put one in. Four, let's put two in. Eight, let's put three in. Nine, let's put four in. 16, oh, numerically, a solution. Five, 20, six, 36, 24. You know what, I think this is outpacing that. Looks like that changed. Went up by nine, this one went up by four. Oh yeah, four to one, that has to happen, right? And this thing's accelerating. So let's look at the graphical perspective. So if we put this data down on Rene Descartes, no, my computer's not on Rene Descartes today. X squared gives us the signature parabolic, four X, linear function, we see the acceleration that happened in that table a little while ago. As X gets past four, this is going up faster than that is. In fact, it's going up faster a lot of places. But the Y values are just diverging. How about we use that word? But where's the points of intersection? I think I can see X equals zero. I think I can see X equals four from the work we did previously. Okay, so that's a graphical perspective. And I already did the algebraic. The algebraic, you gotta, you know, when you solve an equation, you gotta get your variables together. The only way to get the variables together is to swing 4x to the other side. And then anytime you've got an addition or subtraction statement equaling zero, really a lot of fun if you can if you can factor it, which means writing it as a product, taking out what con what is common seemed to be part of our part of our initial four-way into understanding geometrically what was going on. And I hope you can see your answers here. Okay. Now let's, let's up it a notch. Let's change this to, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we're centered. Let's do x cubed equals x. And I'll pause the video and let you think about that. How would you show that geometrically? I mean, somebody might have considered this 1,000, 2,000 years ago. I don't know, but it certainly was something that was considered before logarithms, before integration and differentiation. All right, so we're going back in time. Early mathematicians. Okay, so pause the video, give it some thought. This is what I was thinking. I was thinking a cube. And I don't know how well I'm going to draw these. That's not too bad. That's pretty good for me. Well, then a cube, oh, that's, this has got to look like a cube. How am I going to make that look like a cube? Well, I think there's two ways. I think one of them is one times one times X or negative one times negative one times X. At least I got a solution here. So let's get that drawn. Let's have a one, uh, one, there's my box, and I guess my X in this case is that dimension. I've got height, width, and length. Oh, I got another one too, where it's negative one. Negative one. So that's going to be X. Oh, these drawings are better than I usually do. Okay, 
So when is this box going to take the same size as these? When are the volumes going to be the same? Well, this is a perfect box, as in perfect cube. All sides are the same. Well, then all sides over there have to be the same. And I think that means this has to be one. This has to be negative one. And I think I have geometric equivalency. Okay, so I can see my answers. And I think they have something in common. Remember what I drew over here. That's, that's in common. Well, what if I erase this length? Boom, boom. Well, there goes my volume again, just like the area over there. And what if I make it that this was my x and it goes to zero from the other direction? Well, there goes my volume. So I can see three answers. Negative one, zero, and one from a geometric perspective. Let's do it numerically. Let's start with negative two. Cubit, negative eight, over here. Negative two, negative two. I think I'm gonna be able to do that column pretty easily now. I think if this is my x, my volume is the same. If I had the one times one there. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, two, eight, three, 27. Oh, no, I'm, I'm doing the volume over here. Two, two. I told you this was on the fly. I'm already starting to think about that side. Okay, so that's what's happening over here. Over here, I'm cubing, 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 cubing. Okay, and where do I have equivalency? I think right there, three dimensions. Three dimensions. Okay, so we've looked at it from geometric, numerical. Let's look at it from a graphical perspective. If I take the data that I just erased, this is what a cubic looks like, perfect cube. Y equals X. Where do they intersect? One, one, zero, zero, negative one, negative one. So somebody might have considered that early on in this evolution of the discipline. I think it's an evolution. Some people think it's always existed. Maybe they're both true. But I certainly see one concept on top of another. You know, and I'm probably, uh, well, let's, let's stop there in case I make a, a false statement of some kind. But I don't think I've said anything that's wrong to this point. So let's look at it from an algebraic perspective. What's the rule of solving equations? Get your variables together. They have a common dimension, which is x. x squared minus 1 equals 0. x could equal 0 for the same reasons that length times width equals area, length times width times height equals 0 when one of the dimensions disappears. And there's two ways to do this. You could have a continued factoring, the difference of two squares. And while I'm on the difference of two squares, I might as well look at that geometric, geometrically. Let's look at 25 minus 16. These are very friendly squares. 25 minus 16 is nine. And five is the square root of that. And four is the square root of that. And the sum of the square roots times the difference of the square roots gets us the same area. Okay, from a geometric perspective. Now, if this was five and this was six, now they're still square areas, but this is the square root of five and that's the square root of six. And I don't know what the square root of five minus the square root of six is, but I do know it's the same thing as the square root of five plus the square root of six. I know five minus six, that I do know it's negative one. That's what I should have said. So the square root of five minus the square root of six will also get us negative one. Square root of five times square root of five is five. Square root of six times square root of six is six. And the middle terms cancel because they're conjugates. All right, so geometric, understanding things geometrically, I think was probably where much of algebra originated from. Somebody making some connections. Um, so did I do the graphical? Yes, I did the algebraic. Okay, I think I've done what I wanted to get done having this discussion.
Uh, maybe it'll help someone. Maybe it'll confuse someone. I don't know, but I was thinking about it last night. So I'm just sharing some thoughts. All right. Now, my buddy Yasser, maybe he's got good perspectives on things. We'll see what he has to say. All right. Toodaloo.